Chapter 24. Synthetic cathinones, mephedrone and more. A few key facts. These are synthetic substances designed to mimic cathinone, the active compound in cut. The drugs are a stimulant, and they had widespread media attention in the 2000s. They're consumed by swallowing or sometimes snorting. Occasionally, they can be injected. Some effects include euphoria, increased alertness, sociability, insomnia, agitation, heart palpitations and seizures. Sometimes called bath salts or plant food, synthetic cathinones were part of the group of novel psychoactive substances that appeared in the 1990s and 2000s. They caused a furore in the British and US press, being blamed for everything from cannibalism to genital self-mutilation. More on both of these later. The compounds themselves are not new. Mephedrone and MDPV, two of the most commonly encountered synthetic cathinones, were first recorded in 1929 and 1967 respectively. However, reports of intoxication or abuse of the substances did not occur until much more recently, the 1990s and 2000s, when the substances began to be sold online as legal alternatives to MDMA or cocaine. Once again, consumption of these substances was never legal. They still had to be marketed as not for human consumption in order to be sold. What are they? Cathinone is the active compound in cut, and so synthetic cathinones are broadly similar compounds, and all are slightly different from cathinone at the molecular level. Some that are particularly common or well-known include mephedrone, 4 methyl methcathinone, MDPV, methylene dioxypyrovalerone, Flephedrone, 4 FMC, 4 bromomethcathinone, 4 BMC, ethylone, MDEC, bufedrone, and methylone, to name a few. Phew. They're known colloquially by a variety of different euphemisms, including MCAT, plant food, bath salts, monkey dust, or meow meow. This term seemed particularly common in the UK media a few years ago, although whether it was actually used by people who took it is debatable. Despite each synthetic cathinone being unique at a molecular level, they are hard to distinguish from each other by eye. In fact, they look indistinguishable from many other stimulants, usually found as a white or off-white powder, and more rarely as a tablet or liquid. They're often consumed by snorting, or wrapping some powder in a cigarette paper and swallowing, bombing. It's uncommon, though possible, to inject them. This method of consumption, although rare, occurs more generally in certain specific groups of people often among those who inject other substances as well. Although never legally sold as a product for human consumption, synthetic cathinones were often erroneously known as legal highs, and this might explain some of their appeal. Some may have believed that they were safer than drugs such as cocaine or MDMA. In actual fact, even before being brought under criminal law, these products were never under the strict regulation that drugs such as alcohol and tobacco were under. Marketed online as plant food or bath salts, there was no regulation or quality control in order to ensure that what you were buying was what it claimed to be, and as such, mephedrone and the like were just as unknown a quantity as MDMA or cocaine. What are the short-term effects? The intoxication effects of synthetic cathinones are similar, although not identical, to the intoxication effects of MDMA, amphetamines or cut. Different synthetic cathinones also have slightly distinctive intoxication profiles from each other due to their minor chemical differences at the molecular level. For example, MDPV is particularly potent, needing smaller doses to induce intoxication, and therefore also lower doses to experience negative consequences from overconsumption and risk of toxicity. A number of synthetic cathinones have a relatively short intoxication effect, around two to four hours if swallowed. Positive effects of synthetic cathinone intoxication can include euphoria, increased alertness, empathy, openness, talkativeness, an increased enjoyment of music, and increased sociability, among others. It's probably why synthetic cathinones seem to be popular at raves, parties and festivals, where these substances are likely to be available. They also have a growing popularity among the individuals using them and other substances to enhance sexual behaviour, often referred to as chemsex. Like other stimulants, synthetic cathinones can reduce appetite and can also cause insomnia. Higher doses of synthetic cathinones can induce agitation, this is a common symptom reported by individuals who have consumed too much of the substance if they present at hospital or ring services such as the UK's Poison Information Service. Synthetic cathinones can increase blood pressure, 
and can cause heart palpitations, chest pains, seizures and hypertension as dose increases. Seizures seem particularly prevalent in children and young adults who have taken large doses of the substances. There have been reports of synthetic cathinone intoxication causing psychosis-like symptoms. There's some evidence from self-reports that mephedrone is particularly associated with an increased enjoyment of music or an increased desire to move or dance compared to other synthetic cathinones. MDPV has been linked to what has been termed bizarre behaviours, as well as hallucinations, suicidality and something known as excited delirium syndrome, a set of behaviours somewhat similar to some reports of PCP intoxication, including erratic behaviour, increased strength, a risk of violence and extremely high body temperature. Synthetic cathinone intoxication can also cause blurred vision, hot flushes and muscle tension in the face and jaw, similar to that experienced during amphetamine intoxication due to gurning. If snorted, the substances can lead to irritation of the nasal passages, throat and mouth, and potentially increase the risk of nosebleeds. Synthetic cathinones have been linked to a likelihood of engaging in risky sexual practices. For example, a study in Ireland asked 22 individuals who use mephedrone about how they believed intoxication impacted on their sex lives. They found evidence linking mephedrone intoxication to sexual behaviours including multiple partners and lack of condom use, as well as disinhibition and promiscuity. But they are also linked to chemsex, the use of drugs, often at parties, to enhance sexual experiences. Synthetic cathinones and other substances such as methamphetamine are reportedly being injected during sex, a behaviour known as slamming. Again, risky sexual practices are more common in these settings, meaning there is an increased risk of blood-borne diseases, including HIV and hepatitis B and C, from both injecting and from unprotected sex. How common slamming is is very hard to ascertain. Evidence thus far has come from very small subgroups of men who have sex with men in London and in some French cities, so the true scale of the behaviour is unclear. Injecting synthetic cathinones conveys a much higher risk of harm, as you would expect. This seems to be a growing problem as well among homeless individuals in Hungary, some of whom are shifting from using heroin to injecting mephedrone. Researchers in Hungary found that people injecting synthetic cathinones were more likely than those using heroin to inject more frequently. Some reports from Hungary and Romania suggest up to 6 or even 11 times a day among some individuals, and to share injection equipment, increasing the risk of blood-borne diseases. More frequent injection also increases the risk of skin and vein damage, abscesses, gangrene and infections. Symptoms of synthetic cathinone come down include low mood, panic attacks, paranoia and in severe cases symptoms of psychosis, which can potentially last for several days, according to a study conducted in Germany that used data from psychiatric inpatient units. There's a small amount of evidence, although it's growing, that MDPV in particular might induce psychological dependence in heavy, regular users. And this is backed up by reports from people who use synthetic cathinones regularly of them experiencing withdrawal symptoms when they stop using it and developing tolerance to it, as well as experiencing craving. Myths and misconceptions In the 2010s, the media and the public in the UK and USA in particular were becoming aware of a new substance that was sweeping the streets. The scale of use was hugely exaggerated, and a number of myths and misconceptions sprouted up. Here are a few of the more sensational ones. Bath salts will turn you into a cannibal. This was based on a story from the USA. On a May 2012 afternoon in Miami, Florida, a naked 31-year-old man attacked and maimed a 65-year-old man so severely it left him blind in both eyes. The assailant was shot dead at the scene when he ignored police calls for him to stop attacking the man. Eyewitnesses and video footage of the event showed that Rudy Eugene, the attacker, was biting the older man's face. The attack was widely reported and Eugene was dubbed the Causeway Cannibal by the press because of the location of the attack on Miami's MacArthur Causeway. News reports stated that Eugene was high on synthetic cathinones at the time of the attack and that bath salts were responsible for turning him into a cannibal or zombie. In fact, toxicology reports on Eugene found no suggestion that he had taken synthetic cathinones before the attack. Cannabis was found in his system, and some newspaper reports suggested there were undigested tablets found in his stomach during the autopsy, which were never identified, although this wasn't reported everywhere, so it's hard to know how accurate this report is. 
Either way, bath salts were blamed for the attack without any evidence that they were involved, and the test done did not find any evidence that they had been consumed. There's never been any other evidence that would suggest synthetic cathinones could make someone exhibit cannibalistic behaviour. It's a myth. Mephedrone killed two boys in Scunthorpe. In March 2010, two teenage boys died in Scunthorpe, an industrial town near Hull in the northeast of England. Louis Wainwright was 18 and his friend Nicholas Smith was 19. It was widely reported that they had taken Mephedrone, called Meow Meow in the press, and died because of it. A media outcry in the UK followed, and Mephedrone was banned by the government the following month. However, toxicology reports on the two young men found no methadone in their systems. They had consumed alcohol and methadone, the substance prescribed to individuals as a substitute for heroin. Methadone and alcohol both depress breathing, and the combination of the two was deemed to be the cause of death for both young men, at separate inquests. Whether they were trying to buy methadone but had been misled by similar names is unclear, but they had not taken methadone on the night they died. It's a myth. Synthetic cathinones will make you rip your testicles off. Legal drug teen ripped his scrotum off ran a 2009 headline in the Sun newspaper. The story, taken from a police report, claimed that a young man had taken methadone and experienced an intense hallucinatory experience, believing himself to be covered with biting centipedes and needing hospital treatment after ripping his testicles off. Was there any truth to this? The police report that the story was taken from was an internal memo and the officer who wrote it stated very clearly in the report that this was information gleaned from online forums, in this case a website about methadone, and therefore should be read with that in mind, as there was no evidence to back this story up. New Scientist magazine investigated the story further, and the owner of the website reportedly told them that the tale had been uploaded as a joke to see if the media would bite. And bite they did. It's a myth. <laughs> 